by uh, uh, Mr. Abu Shumon, who has uh, been working very hard for many years on uh, climate finance and climate budgeting in Bangladesh. This is the second lecture. He gave a very interesting first lecture already uh, with a lot of details of how these were done. He is now uh, going to give us a second talk on climate fiscal reforms in Bangladesh, a little bit more forward looking uh, on what can be done uh, after the what has already been done as a foundation. And then we have uh, uh, two designated discussants, again, the same as the last time, Ranjit Chakraborty and uh, uh, Professor Mizan Khan, my colleague from ICAD. Um, before I give the floor to uh, Shumon, uh, let me just also apologize in advance. I won't be able to stay till the end. So I've asked Professor Mizan Khan after he finishes his uh, discussant uh, in, uh, intervention uh, to moderate the following open discussion. I hope we'll have time for that and then conclude on behalf of uh, ICAD. My sincere apologies. I, I'll have to rush off after a, a few more minutes. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let me hand over to Abu Shuman for your uh, lecture presentation. Uh, you should, who's doing the screen? Are you doing it yourself? Um, I'll do by myself. Okay, so if you can give uh, uh, Shumon screen share and take the slide off. Fahad, stop Fahad, screen sharing. Slide, slide uh, ke um, host you, um, facility okay. um, so now um, I'll be um, sharing my screen. Um, I have I've made a little presentation, unlike last time, it was a little longer, but this time I thought, you know, it's, it's better if you could discuss more than, you know, listening my boring long lectures. So um, I, I tried to be um, anchoring on, on main issues, but it has been discussed. Um, uh, Shuman, can you make it full screen, please? Yeah, yeah, I, I will just start in a okay. uh, presentation, okay. but I was trying to make some, you know, um, introductory understanding okay. about Go ahead, go through. ahead. <laughs> Sorry um, to interrupt. So, no, 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 it's all right. Um, I, I'll try to be, uh, you know, very quick um, that we have um, much time. I mean, uh, I was made um, host, but do I need to admit everyone? Maybe, maybe someone also can take that responsibility for me. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so let's see, um, my discussion is um, going to be around climate fiscal framework that we have, you know, adopted in 2014 and then, you know, um, updated in 2020. Um, so my point of discussions are, what are the climate fiscal reforms that we have, be, we have identified in the, you know, climate fiscal framework um, in and itself. So, what are those and how different are, are these ideas and reforms from 2014? What changes so that we had to change the framework you know, after um, these six, seven years, six years, I would say, to be specific. So I, I, I would try to you know, um, answer some of the questions. I would raise a um, few issues that we can discuss you know, in our um, next one and a half hours. So, um, Okay, um, first, let us look, look at, you know, what was it? What was um, the framework in 2014, that one uh, we, we adopted um, at first? You know, you know, I mean, many of you know already that the CPIR, the um, Climate Public Expenditure and Institutional Review, that has already been done in many, you know, uh, countries around and globally. And... Um, that CPR in 2012 came with an advice that we should develop a, we should adopt a fiscal framework. You know, this fiscal term is very important for us. There are many other countries, they have adopted partly with mitigation framework, partly with like financing framework, but in Bangladesh, we have adopted fiscal framework. And I will soon be discussing why we are you know, um, name this um, framework the same way um, the CPR has um, suggested us to do. So, so what was the, you know, um, 
um, expectations from that um, framework in 2014. So the framework expected the the financing system, I mean, the, the whole budgeting system in Bangladesh for equitable division of climate funds and the allocation to the concerned sectors and division of services, identification of the demand of the climate fund, spending responsibility of uh, financial authorities for raising revenues, national and international financing options, and fiscal tools, obviously. Uh, and finally, the very important issue is that we might have, you know, um, not adequate, but some, you know, sizable funds. But the question, you know, ends with how effectively and efficiently we could use that funds for whom? Did we, you know, uh, target the right, or, I mean, uh, beneficiaries? in right place, uh, right time, and so on. So that were the three questions, I mean, uh, expectations from that framework. And all we understand that, you know, um, when you adopt something first, that often becomes a little bit, um, or I would rephrase my word, like not always we can be, you know, very mature, you know, in terms of, you know, adopting all the things, you know, encompassing all the, landscapes that um, that we have around we we do very good you know demonstrations we do uh, little mistakes we miss something so that all happened with this you know framework that was a good starting point you know let me just you know uh, make sure that that so what was the basis for that framework that framework actually tried to identify how climate finance has actually been flowing from the you know domestic sources as a revenue and from the foreign sources as an aid or loan and whatsoever in, in different forms. So these two streams and then it was either you know the domestic resources are actually flowing through um, uh, the government budgets and then the foreign resources either coming through you know bilateral, multilateral, other climate um, um, resilience funds, different strategic or sector programs for climate resilience because not all the programs have actually been implemented in Bangladesh through the government's um, annual development program. There are programs, you know, directly implemented by different owner agencies like USAID had um, so many of these natural resource management and biodiversity management projects that are very much linked with, uh, you know, climate change and so on. So we identified, uh, you know, very formal government, you know, through the public system and so on. One Track. The other track is like an alternate flow, like outside the budget. And, um, but what happened? Both these streams were actually trying to achieve the same goal that we have, you know, um, agreed in our, um, say, Bangladesh Climate Change Strategy and Action Plan in 2009. And then, you know, before that, it was like uh, NAPA in 2005. And then afterward, we, we adopted different, you know, uh, mitigation plans and so on. We adopted a, a Delta management plan. Uh, and then we are now preparing our national um, adoption plan, you know, the holistic, um, whole of the society um, uh, national adoption plan. So, so this was the main basis. And what that framework did and focused mainly on is, you know, um, how to track. Because the climate agenda was not very much embedded in the policies and frameworks, budget management cycle, and so on. So what they did, they tried to track the amount of money that are being spent through the budget system. Maybe not very much targeted, but it was being spent. So they developed some kind of you know um, initial um, <clears throat> tracking system climate finance tracking system. That was the main focus. They also bring forward some of the ideas, like the, you know, how the taxation policy should be in favor of the, you know, um, climate, mostly mitigation and then little adaptation. How should be the subsidy and incentive, you know, strategies for the government and also the, you know, um, green banking, for example. So these are the small, small things that came through, but you know, it was it was lacking a little bit of um, you know integration of all these ideas all together. So, you know, well, um, you know, time passes and we spend nearly um, six seven years, 
you know identifying new issues new plans new um, you know agendas and so on one agenda would have been enough to change the whole landscape you know um, adoption is the, this uh, 2015 uh, global goals for example when we internalize that one that changes so many of the things that actually happened let us see what happened the government adopted SDGs at its uh, new development framework in 2015 and adopted one more thing that is very important for you know financial disciplines budgeting system and so on so that is called the um, public finance management reform strategy you know we are now going through a reform stage to to make our you know public finance management more smarter more transparent more you know equitable and so on so so we have a strategy for pfm reforms and then we have these um, sdg goals as a new you know or the core development framework you know um, in our country so that has changed you know everything around and also there are uh, emerging gaps such as limited <clears throat> fiscal policy private sector engagement that was not on the board at that time very much strongly but now it is because you know, SDG is not only built on the public financing or the, you know, bilat bilaterals or the multilaterals, but it focuses very much on the, you know, private sector engagement. And it has, you know, several, you know, um, you know joint responsibilities to, to attain um, some of its goals, in fact. And then the development in the international arena around is all, has also changed. Like, you know, Paris Agreement, for example. Take this as a case, and then the developed world has agreed to establish a um, like a biggest fund for climate change ever um, is the Green Climate Fund, for example. I mean, it has problems in itself. We are not going to discuss that thing. It has problems with you know size and then um, extent and then also accessing for many of the countries like Bangladesh. But that's another issue that has also changed a little bit of the whole you know. Um, Financing uh, landscape, climate change. So, what the new framework is actually offers us that we need to do. First thing first is that what I was just discussing that we wanted to bring the idea of the private sector engagement for climate change adaptation, mostly adaptation and mitigation. <coughs> we also wanted to recognize, you know, um, in our you know uh, climate fiscal framework. The role of the NGOs and CSOs, like even even today, if you if you try to find something about um, Bangladesh Climate Change Trust Fund, you will find find maybe one or two reports, comprehensive reports, I would say, um, other than two very recent, you know, um, um, evaluations or the audits, performance audits that are being done by you know um, Comptroller and Auditor General of Bangladesh. You know, um, so that two report is already, you know, uh, vetted by the parliament, you know, presented before the parliament, and now it is open for the public to see how effectively the funds were, you know, been spent. Um, so these two sectors are, are engaged. I mean, let's talk about um, one report that has been published by Transparency International Bangladesh a few years back. I mean, at least two, three years back. So these are the two, three things. But we should have had more because the government has already allocated 3,847 pro-taka equivalent US dollars and so on. Um, so how effectively or efficiently we could we could spend that money? This is the only two, three reports that have been, you know, um, you know uh, existed as reference. But we should have had many. That, that is where you know NGO and CSS role is very critical. Second point uh, is is uh, very important, and I would say the the core of the whole thing, together with highlighting the fiscal policies like tax, VAT, subsidy, and pricing, it also brings to focus some policies, namely lending policy and insurance policy, as they are closely linked with the fiscal policies of the government. Look, you know how far the government with its scarce resources could afford all these loss and damages almost every alternate years, either it in any form of a big flood or a cyclone or storm surges and so on. 
So, or plus plus, you know. Um, so, what happens if we don't bring this together? The the for example the risk transfer you know uh, mechanism the insurance policy. So that when something very bad happens, the private sector, the insurance sector should come forward and you know contribute. So that government don't, don't need to cut the regular agriculture development budget and then use it for you know uh, relief and rehabilitation. So so we can you know um, include external affairs in our climate financing you know ecosystem. So that's that's very important and that is the core of the, the core idea of the new framework. And finally, um, this framework brings to sharper, sharper focus the demand side of the climate uh, finance, given the country's vulnerable and the risk of loss and damage arising from climate change. Why demand side? Uh, demand side because we wanted to focus on what is actually needed, not necessarily how much we can realize in, in, in the form of you know, revenues and then we spend that. We need some targets. In our previous plans, you have hardly seen any, you know, um, properly costed amount. How much money the that particular plan or strategy would take to, to be fully implemented? But now, you know, the new plans like um, Delta Plan, for example, it 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 started telling how much money it would take to be implemented in in next. 30 years and then 50 years, 2041, 200, uh, 2100, so on. So in different timelines, it is estimating how much money is needed. We need to progress more, but we, we have started to you know um, um, go on that line. Maybe the next um, uh, national adoption plan would um, give us more in terms of targeting, in terms of you know, how much money or resources we need to invest, where, which sector, on a priority basis, in which timeline. So all these questions is going to be answered and this framework is going to give, you know, ideas. And one thing I need to make, make, make sure you know, before we, we go further in our discussion that framework is, is kind of a, guiding principles, you know, what it is providing. Is it providing a, an implementation plan for um, climate adaptation? I would say no. Framework is for, you know, advising the government or the sector, you know, um, planners and the ministries, um, how they should operate, how they should improve their performances, how they should, what are the available tools globally, you know, and, and offering them to the, uh, those to them so that they can internalize those in their own contexts, not necessarily developing a, you know, um, fully fledged action plan for any sector or anything. It gives you ideas. Okay, so that thing we need to be, you know, um, understanding at the very outset what we are going to get out of this framework. So let's see what was the basis for this you know, um, uh, framework, this iteration. Last one, we have seen that it was based on the flow of the financing from, you know, revenue generation to you know, climate inclusive, you know, allocations and so on. How it did flow from, from this step to another and then other processes and then finally reaching to the um, real beneficiaries. But this plan especially focuses on the budget setting process of the country okay if you if you start with the integration of climate change policies and public finance okay that's the step one let's take it what do we have in terms of policy we have like bccsap we have country investment plans plan for uh, environment forest climate change we have delta plan we have national determined contribution we have sdgs right but do you know how many of these plans are, are already you know, linked with the budget setting process? I would say very limited, very limited you know, uh, progress we could do. We have plans, policies, but they're hardly ever been you know, um, prepared in such a way that that can be 
you know, integration ready for, for um, uh, internalizing in, in the financial management system of the country or of the government. So that, that was a problem. And we, we tried to identify this thing. And during this last six years, you know, UNDP and the finance division together um, undertook so I mean, very important, you know, interventions that could at least interlock this very important document of uh, Bangladesh Climate uh, Strategy and Action Plan with the, uh, you know, financial management system. I mean, the we call it the finance division's um, automated system, the IBUS, for budget preparation and taking stock of the expenditures and then finally ensuring the trans transparency and accountability. So we we use that platform to interlink these two, like this budget setting process and the BCCSP. The second step, as soon as we link it, we looked into resource requirements for adaptation and mitigation. As I was talking, you know, a little while ago, only a, you know, um, I mean, few number of uh, plans or strategies were talking about how much money is actually needed to be implemented. I mean, fully implemented or partially implemented. And how, to what extent, if implemented fully, this plan is going to offset the risk arising from climate change and vulnerabilities and so on. So that was another problem. What resources are being required? So as I said, the new plans that are being now being developed are coming with you know investment ready thing. Like they're already telling these are the things we need to do, and that is going to be, you know, th that that will cost us this amount of money. So that is um, the second step. The third one is climate inclusive fiscal and financial policies. What that includes? The same thing like the earlier plan that includes tax subsidy pricing. Okay. Additional thing that it offers is that like new and alternate, you know, uh, investment um, instruments, climate bond, for example. There are many evidences across the globe that uh, the bond market is very strong, very vibrant. But but in Bangladesh, in general, bond market is not that um, you know uh, matured yet. So we um, try to include the the concept. In, in the framework so that when the government plans, you know, to go further, they took this on, they can take this on board. The insurance I have discussed already, the lending policies, for example, when the banks, say for example, any bank, it's, um, you know, uh, maybe a commercial bank, when they're providing a loan, if the central bank tells them in a guideline that that, investment should be climate proof. So that they need to have a, not necessarily only the EIA, the environmental impact assessment of that investment. They can also have a climate impact assessment in both ways. Is this investment going to be affected by climate change in five years, 10 years time? Or is this investment going to contribute in further climate change or reduce resilience of, of our country and communities and sectors? So this is the two sides of the same point. And then the green banking, uh, you know, uh, that was also part of the uh, last framework, but we have, you know, collected more evidences how this can be used in terms of adaptation, not necessarily for mitigation and all other things. So these are the, you know, um, uh, fiscal part. And then comes the main part, the supply of climate finance, how much money we can actually um, deliver. The very important question is that we have domestic and ex external already. We, we have increasingly more domestic finances for, finances for uh, climate investments. We have, well, gradually reducing external finances for climate or any other investments as we grow to middle income countries and then forward. But the uncharted territory is yes, yet is the private sector. We don't even know how much they are doing. Obviously, they are doing. When you see some of the examples, like different banks are, you know, um, undertaking projects like um, solar irrigation projects. 
okay? Which are like in a location where the electricity is not there, like off-grid things. So private sector is very important and that will definitely shape the whole spectrum of the climate financing supply side at least uh, thing. And then it comes climate inclusive planning and budgeting. There is two parts. One is planning, one is budget. We have the planning commission who they are, you know, making our, you know, um, annual development programs every year. And then we have, you know, uh, finance division, the finance ministry. They are preparing the budget for, you know, the operations of the government. You see, when these two comes together, that constitutes the whole budget for the country, for that year, particular year. So, and also we have, you know, a perspective plan. We have, you know, five-year plan for every five years to develop that one. We have SDG, we have, you know, medium to macroeconomic frameworks. We have a ministry budget framework. That is also the sectoral framework, I would say, because um, every or one or two ministries combined together constitutes the sector. So we have, and that ministry, that MBFs, I mean, the ministry budget frameworks also represents in a, in a way the sectors itself. And then we have the annual development program that we, uh, that I just, you know, uh, referred to. And finally, we have the money, we have the plan, and then we execute throughout the year. End of the year, what, what should happen? We need to monitor, we need to evaluate. I mean, not only end of the year, but through the process, we need to monitor, evaluate, we need to see how it is, you know, um, how effectively we could um, invest that money, how, how efficiently we could invest that money, you know, through our auditing process, for example, through the parliamentary process, um, through CSO media. Media plays a great role in that, you know, finding out if there is any problem, finding out success even, how, you know, good stories to the, to the fore. So, these are the things, and the challenge remains at the core, like how to implement that framework. And that is why we need to clarify each of these points. I have already talked about, I will show you the slides and you know refer to that. So what are the climate inclusive fiscal policies? As I told already, we have tax, VAT, subsidy, and pricing. So it was, it was uh, there in the last framework, but this framework, we have, included more and more evidences and more and more new tools. Like, you know, last memo didn't talk about carbon tax. I mean, imposing, imposing carbon taxes because that is very, you know, politically sensitive as well. But this time we, we had a lot of long discussions and we included that one in our plan. And if you look at the um, eight five-year plan, the, the five-year plan took that idea from the uh, possibly took that idea from the you know um, existing climate fiscal framework. Not only that, we also see that they they also included environmental fiscal reforms beyond climate. So that is a good good progress. I mean, now the things are coming in our you know um, uh, strategic planning documents. Implementation may be a little slower now. But in time, it will become part of our own behaviors. I mean, the institutional behavior, the, the spending behavior, the planning behavior. So when it is there, then we'll be actually, um, you know, doing autonomously, not necessarily imposing. So that will happen. It also explores the options of leaving, as I said, carbon tax on fossil fuel to curb emissions and raise funds for climate adaptation and mitigation. If we look at the development planning and budgeting. Um, so um, we try to um, invest our you know, uh, time and resources to improve the macroeconomic model of the, um, uh, of the finance ministry or the government, you know, in a way to include climate dimension in it so that when we are focusing something, focusing some development or progress, we keep the climate you know, um, impacts in our you know, focus. So, so that is the main thing. The second thing we have, you know, 
what what we have done in last six years is that we included you know climate agenda in the budget circular and budget circular is the actually the starting point i mean in a way there are many other steps in report but that is the visible starting point of you know um uh, the budget setting process so and that gives the sector ministries guidance the necessary guidance that they need to consider while preparing their own budget and the national budget is actually formulated when you compile all the sectoral budgets together and sum this up so that is why this you know call circular is very important and we did this already and this is available for you if you go to the finance ministry's website and then um, the tracking methodology i have discussed it before and uh, in my last lecture as well so now we know how much you know public money is being spent for climate finance it also brings to focus on the adaptation and mitigation issues in national procurement process even because procurement is very important you see often we are talking about the green products you know green bricks for example so when the government procures for its infrastructural development should it procure the you know um, burnt bricks or the bricks that are not non burnt and releasing less emission to the atmosphere so these are the things i mean what to procure so procurement has a good role to play and we have included this you know green procurement or climate sensitive procurement whatever you say in this you know existing uh, in this updated framework um accountability and oversight mechanism side we have you know uh, tried to do uh, so many things and we have also proposed so many things in the in the uh, updated framework we have worked with the uh, office of the controller and auditor general shortly named as ocag that's a um 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 auditing institute uh, of, uh, so and and there is cso and media so um this this accountability part is actually governed by these four um, pillars and then in addition we have um um we have had taken the exercise of identifying the roles and responsibilities of uh, key actors like the planning commission what they should do how they should internalize climate things how they should you know include um um climate dimension in their planning process in such a way that most of the i'm not saying all of the but most of the investments are climate ready when they're formulated not necessarily ready to fitting later but climate ready from the outset and then we have imed for example who they are monitoring all the you know public investments they need to have some sort of you know climate um indicator framework or the climate results framework so that they can they could measure what are the results climatic you know climate informed results the sector ministries are producing not necessarily making you know a report like how much money was budgeted and how much what percentage of that is actually spent and what is the efficiency of spending not that they should have this sort of things in um, to to measure the efficiency and effectiveness and sustainability of the climate finance so that is the development planning and budgeting part um we have you know that is the totally brand new inclusion in 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 this framework the updated framework that is the financial sector policies you already know that this financial and fiscal so we put that in two different pots but then they, they, they go very hand in hand when one fails other tries to recover and when other is performing better the 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 another is actually uh, progress well too so they go hand in hand so in in this framework we have the highlights the need for reviewing the lending policy that i've already discussed the, uh, what and how the bank should you know operate uh, to be climate smart okay um we discussed about the green growth insurance policy you know um and it also sheds light on climate investments and strategies to promote green banking in bangladesh including bangladesh bank's role in its process finally the question comes how to implement all those the framework outlined an implementation plan for the proposed reform agenda 
if you go through that plan, the plan is available online. So it also highlights the need for supportive institutional arrangements for its successful implementation. It stresses, it stresses the importance of skills and capacity development of key actors ranging from relevant ministries to private sectors, organizations, and the collaboration in between them, um, knowledge sharing from you know, South-South cooperation. For example, you know, uh, Nepal started you know, uh, citizens' climate budgeting prior to Bangladesh's citizens' you know, uh, climate budgeting. We have learned from them how to do that. So this way, we can learn something from Indonesia. Maybe Indonesia can learn from us how to you know, um, develop um, things we are now developing. We can, you know, uh, there are similarities, there are you know, differences as well. Bangladesh is more focused on fiscal, you know, uh, side of it. Maybe the other neighboring countries, India or Pakistan is actually focusing more on the financial side of it. So this lessons learning is, is very critical. And this framework emphasizes on that. Um, Shuman, yes. Shuman, please have five more minutes. And yeah. then we can have more discussions, please. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm almost at the end of my discussion. So, yeah, sure. so, so, so what are the reform agendas? You know, I'm just summarizing. So we have fiscal policies. We have supply side of the climate change finance. We have private sector engagement. We have, you know, formalized the role of NGO and CSO. We have climate inclusive lending policy of the central banks. We have the climate inclusive insurance policy. So all these, you know, are the priority agendas, and then that continues, as we mentioned, the operation of the central bank to to make the, their operations more climate sensitive in terms of lending uh, and investments. Um, and then we discussed about climate inclusive planning and budgeting. And one thing that that was not discussed discussed, but this need to be taken on board and should be given more priority. That we also included here is the local climate financing framework. As the fiscal um, you know, um, premise is a little smaller there, like in Union Purishad or Upojila, they don't have much tax pays or revenue earning things. So they will they will focus in more on financing things. We talked about green procurement and accountability and, over, accountability and oversight. This is the second last you know, um, uh, slide. Um, what we have done, what are the initiatives already been taken? So as I have told that budget call circulars are there, which is now climate inclusive. The ministry budget frameworks are um, uh, also climate inclusive so that the ministries are actually, if you look at there, ministries are reporting that what are the you know, climate adaptation thing, I mean, interventions they're undertaking and what is the progress of it end of the year. Um, we have medium term macroeconomy policy framework is uh, and which is becoming increasingly more and more climate sensitive. Um, we have also done a review on the TUR of the budget management committees for different sector ministries. So they are more concerned about how much uh, resources are being invested for um, each ministry divisions and departments. We have reviewed the key performance indicators of, of those sector ministries so that they can, they can assess their performances through the way that how effectively they are using all those resources they are given for uh, climate investments. And these are the initiatives that have already been taken. And what are the research and studies commissioned so far? So we, we you know, commission studies and research from finance division and from, with support from UNDP. Uh, we prepared a climate uh, inclusive macroeconomic uh, model, which is now being scrutinized and being reviewed by the finance ministry and soon be, you know, possibly be adopting. Um, a study on introducing climate bond for financing climate investments, a study on insurance policy options for climate risk management. Um, that, that, that is almost it in its final stage and in a review process. And also we reviewed existing fiscal policy resume and proposed entry points and feasible options for climate inclusive, climate inclusive fiscal policies as a whole, including all, all the things together, the tax fat, subsidy and price. So um, this was mostly it. I think we have now so many of the things on the table to discuss about. 
Uh, I have just only uncovered things, not discussed in details. So um, um, hope you, you have things to discuss now. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you, Shuman, for your excellent presentation and uh, keeping time for further discussion. I think Dr. Selim had to leave for attending another important meeting. So uh, let me take over the uh, discussion moderation. So uh, after uh, Shimon's eloquent presentation, let me now invite uh, our uh, designated discussant, Mr. Ranjit Kumar Chakraborty, who is a former additional secretary of the finance division and currently the project manager of the inclusive budgeting and financing uh, climate resilience. So you can see he is a veteran policy maker as well as a practitioner. So let us hear from uh, Mr. Ranjit Kumar. So you have the floor, Mr. Kumar. Hey, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Mijan Arkan, uh, for giving me the floor. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sure. So am I loud enough? Uh, if, if, yes. you, if you, yes, if you yes, find yes. that my voice is not loud enough, please tell me. Yeah. No, no, sure. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Suman uh, for a very elaborate presentation on the agenda that the government of Bangladesh has been pursuing uh, since 2016. And I would say that in Bangladesh, uh, the, the eruption of climate fiscal framework, as Shumon mentioned in his uh, discussion in 2014, that actually marked the beginning of the pursuit of whole climate finance governance agenda, governance agenda in the country. I would like to repeat what Shumon has already mentioned. It is two details, and perhaps you know uh, there should be a summary of the discussion. I, I should have summarized, but uh, I have got to make some points from my side. That's why I won't uh, resort to that you know, course of action. What uh, was missing in his presentation is the challenges that we faced in implementing these reforms. The reform agenda is too wide, and what challenges we basically faced, and how we actually uh, coped up with the challenges that we faced. I think that story should be told uh, and should be uh, shared with the audience today. First of all, the novelty of the idea of climate finance. As I mentioned in my previous discussion early in uh, July, that climate finance has come into currency you know, very recently. And that's why it was very difficult on our part to penetrate this idea into the existing system. So coming from public finance background, and I also worked for the finance division for many years, it was pretty difficult to sell the idea first because they are tuned with the, you know, with the, with the, with the normal budget setting process. When we proposed the idea, although the framework was adopted by the finance division, but when, when it's tried to sell the idea, of uh, introducing a new budget call circular by embedding climate dimension, it was not that easy. So we had to uh, go for lots of discussion with the, with, the, with the senior management of the finance division, and eventually we became successful you know, to, uh, you know, in terms of issuing the budget call circular to the different ministries. And the next challenge that came in it was even more difficult by taking on board the line ministry officials. The finance division officials were by and large, they, they are definitely efficient in setting budget, uh, not climate budget, but in the line ministry, they were not you know, that efficient in, in terms of you know, following the procedures that were, uh, that were shared with them uh, through the budget call circular. So that was another challenge that we faced. So capacity was the major issue, both in the finance division and also in the sector ministries who are involved. So far we have involved uh, 25 sector ministries, but uh, 
but while 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 embedding these procedures in the uh, climate uh, in in the budgeting system it was it was not resisted but we had to do a lot of you know mentoring kind of exercise you know, to educate them about the system and in the process we also started learning new things so for example when we first uh, you know issued the operational guideline that was not quite you know smart and efficient so we had to we had to look for a new kind of methodology uh, on climate finance uh, we call it climate finance tracking methodology and approach so we had to go for a new kind of methodology to make the you know climate allocation more realistic and the analysis to make the analysis more objective so uh, we, we had to innovate this kind of you know tracking methodology to make our estimation more credible to the citizens and the parliamentarians you know uh, so so this is another kind of you know intervention that we have to make to make our estimation credible the third challenge was with the office of the auditor general you know in bangladesh the office of the auditor general conducts audit uh, two sets of two kinds of audit one is financial audit they look at the financial statements of different ministries uh, you know, and also different agencies but and also they undertake a kind of exercise which is called compliance audit they uh, look at the expenditure and also the vouchers and also try to look at the rules and procedures but when we proposed that would like to implement climate performance audit it was new to them it was a new protocol in the whole government audit you know uh, exercise so these are the things that we have to face now there is another challenge that we will be facing in future about embedding climate change dimension in the parliamentary oversight so that is still you know remaining so these are the ch you know challenges that we had to face while implementing this agenda now one more thing i would like to add while we faced all this agenda we had two opportunities as well so i must mention those opportunities one thing is that in bangladesh the policy makers at the highest policy level uh, there is an agreement that in bangladesh we have to pursue the climate finance agenda so that agreement was there and there were lots of policy strategies in bangladesh say for example bangladesh climate change strategy and action plan it was a ready document but it was not integrated in the resource allocation process and shwan has mentioned it elaborately and then uh, uh, the the sdg came in so you know in bangladesh you know in 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 steering in steering this exercise bangladesh made a lot of contributions in globally as well one is bangladesh climate change strategy and action plan and another one when shuman mentioned that uh, about the climate uh, fiscal framework in 2014 it was a novel agenda and it was the it is the bangladesh which first introduced this idea of climate fiscal framework and again bangladesh climate change strategy and action plan is also a new one which bangladesh contributed to the global forum and we are also spearheading many more agenda globally that's why in our case you know although we face challenges we had opportunities as well and one more opportunity that we had and shuman also mentioned in his discussion that bangladesh government have been pursuing a set of reform agenda since mid 1990s so over the past 25 years the bangladesh government so we actually we are fortunate that we found a very mature reform environment in bangladesh that's why we could actually just you know penetrate our ideas into the system otherwise it would have been very very difficult you know to penetrate this idea now let me just clarify one or two points about climate budget so there is a perception that we are 
preparing climate budget. So this is it's a wrong perception in Bangladesh. The budgeting legal framework is still not ready to prepare climate budget in Bangladesh. We do not, we do not propose any climate allocation in the budget. What we do, we track climate allocation, we try to find out climate allocation through our tracking methodology and show the citizens as to the amount of allocation that is subsumed in the total budget of a particular ministry. I don't know whether I could make it clear to you. So we are tracking the allocation, but this is not, this is not budget allocation as such you know, in the national budget. That's why we call it climate budget report. So I think this perception should be made clear to all participants today, because they might think that we are taking you know, climate budget to the parliament. No, we are not taking climate budget to the parliament. We are informing the parliament about the allocation that is what out from the total budget. And the purpose of this climate budget report is to make the citizens aware of the government's commitment for resource allocation to, 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 to address the vulnerabilities of the communities at large, in particular those who are living in different climate hotspots in the country. So, uh, uh, so I think I, I could clarify this uh, misperception about climate budget. And about the inclusion of financial sector, I have got to say something. Uh, Dr. Mijan, uh, yes. can I spend one or two more minutes? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, thank you very much. When uh, Shumon was talking about the, about the financial sector, basically financial sector is a very big sector, but uh, we thought that insurance is a potential sector. And why we included insurance, insurance sector? In Bangladesh, every year the government has to spend a lot of fiscal resources to repair you know, the damage of the infrastructure because of the climatic disasters every year, which is Bangladesh is frequented by you know, climate, uh, climatic disasters almost, uh, you know, uh, almost in every two to three years. So for that government has to spend, spend a lot of money and it has got fiscal space, there's fiscal cost, huge fiscal cost. One is infrastructure and the other one, government has to widen its social safety net program because of this kind of disaster. So in a country like Bangladesh, where we are pursuing a growth rate of you know, 7% or you know, in future, it would be 9.9% in 2041. So in a situation like this, we cannot think of something when we are putting in place lots of infrastructure, we cannot think of, you know, uh, uh, think of absence of you know, enough risk coverage by the insurance companies in Bangladesh. They are ready to do, do it, but we could not just you know, make our insurance policy climate inclusive. So in that way, we are moving towards the direction and that will definitely make a, you know, a big difference uh, in, the, in the climate fiscal regime and also in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the in the total development agenda of the country. So, so these are the things that I wanted to share with the participants. Uh, I think you know, when the question and answer session will come in, then we'll be definitely reflecting you know, more on this. Uh, and Shumon's presentation has definitely instigated the participants to ask questions, and I just tried to add or rather supplemented some points that, that, that are worth mentioning. So thank you very much for inviting me to give my reflections on this subject. Uh, and this subject is close to my heart. So we have been working in this area over the past five years. So thank you. So over to Dr. Mijan. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Ranjit Babu, for sharing your deep insight uh, with the participants. You are a veteran in uh, climate financing, in overall financing and fiscal issues in Bangladesh, both as a regulator and as a practitioner. And I hope 
our uh, participants have greatly benefited from your insights. So now, as my uh, uh, hat, as a designated discussant, I'll just take a few minutes only. Uh, uh, Suman, uh, you have raised the question of, for example, issue of uh, NGO's role, you know, and cited the two reviews of the uh, IMED or Audit uh, Control and Auditor General's report on BCC TF uh, activities, as well as TIB. But if you look at the conclusions of these two uh, studies, then uh, they are quite contradictory. They don't support that much each other. That is the reason I think we need, you're absolutely right, that we need to have more studies. But the problem is, just for the last few months, for example, I have been looking for uh, the whole set of projects of the TF uh, since uh, its inception, uh, because my, uh, my intention was to initiate two research uh, studies. One is how much money is invested directly at the local community kind of level. And another is how much money goes for gender sensitive activities. Uh, if I could have, for example, granular data, detailed data uh, about budget allocations within the projects, then I could find out, for example, but after a few communications with the uh, leaders of the uh, trust fund, then communication stopped because we don't have this data. So here is the question. Bangladesh is a pioneer in initiating novel policies. There is no doubt about it for the last 20, 30 years. We have been initiating policies uh, look at the corruption index, our position does not change much. This is a treasure. Position, for example, I think uh, uh, is the lowest in South Asia. So unless, for example, we can improve our index, you know, then international community will not have much this is what we need to ensure. Look at uh, Bhutan, for example. Bhutan is very high on the corruption perception index, uh, index. among the developed countries. Yeah, it falls. Uh, so we need to put much, you know, uh, efforts here. How to make uh, our system accountable and transparent? Because you, you see, we have the um, act, uh, Information Act, Right to Information Act. But it is applicable both for the government as well as for the NGOs uh, who uh, work on donor funding. But what is the status of implementation of the right to act fund? I give a simple example. If the forest department or if the local government uh, engineering division, for example, in the upazila level, uh, uh, no, puts on the notice board the amount of budget allocation in uh, a specific project, and people look at it, and that is uh, more than halfway to ensure accountability and transparency. But we don't get that kind of information, which citizens have the right to. This is where Bangladesh we need to have to increase our serious efforts to uh, enhance the image of Bangladesh. This is one point. And then uh, I will not uh, talk. This uh, fiscal framework 2020, I had the privilege of uh, reading both the 14 uh, framework as well as the 2020. I am now working for uh, uh, funding for uh, NAP implementation of NAP, that is my responsibility now, so I'm going deeper into it. Uh, now, you have mentioned some studies that on insurance, on climate bond. Uh, are they available already? You will answer after I finish. Okay. Then I think we need to do a study on the impact uh, the uh, fiscal framework mentions about the social and economic impacts of uh, imposing a carbon tax, for example, or elimination of fossil fuel subsidies. We need to initiate a study in earnest.
to impose, for example, a carbon tax, because first we need to understand the impact. A review of the green banking that uh, Dr. Atul Rahman has initiated uh, about a decade ago, uh, because uh, all the would have benefited me for so I think uh, let me now you can answer these questions and then uh, let me invite the audience um, questions and comments sure, sure. thank you sir um, I find like um, the question you have asked about the availability of the uh, new studies um, obviously as you are working on uh, although the reports are at uh, its draft stage, not yet finalized or published, but you are you are you need those for another national priority, you know, document. Obviously, you can access that that thing, you know, from UNDP. And UNDP as a kind of an international public organization, um, it doesn't hold any information in itself, um, or uh, neither I think that UN is not going to make any additional benefit out of it. So you can definitely get those, and those are available. And I will, I will, um, um, I mean, uh, Ranjit sir is here. Um, he can also help, you know, disseminate those reports to you as well. Okay. But I will also talk with um, my colleagues so that uh, it can be available to you, um, with you uh, as soon as possible. Yes, uh, sure. And I'll, second I'll, thing, I'll, yes, after, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, uh, second, I think your internet was a bit, um, uh, no, uh, disturbing you um, and also okay. not helping us to listen you properly. So what I understood that you you um, asked about a detailed strategy before undertaking such carbon tax reforms and so on. Um, understand the how it will impact uh, people and the economy. Um, if it is so, I also believe the same, and we should we should have you know much you know um, detailed study. Um, and also a stratified study, like, like how it will impact the, you know, um, uh, lower thirty percent of the population, for example, and then how it will impact the higher thirty percent uh, of the population, and then how we can um, provide protection to the lower thirty percent, and maybe you know um, balance something from the higher thirty percent, so that it 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 brings like we must not want to. Um, impose taxes on those poor farmers who they are, um, you know, uh, putting money for diesel engine for the irrigation. You know, so yeah. increasing diesel cost for them is, is is doesn't make sense. But you know, imposing tax on high cost octane is possibly uh, more sense than uh, the diesel one. So I mean, there are different discourses and discussions. We need to take all those on board before taking any decisions, you know, be it in NBR or finance division or any sectoral ministries, you know, handling with this issue. Um, I, I also believe that, and, and regarding the green banking, it is, although it has started like 10 years back, 15 years back, you know, uh, very noble initiative, but it's still, I think, um, in a in a very um, rudimentary stage, I would say. I mean, I would make that comment because, um, you see, only whenever we talk about green banking, we refer to that 49 products, you know, in the Bangladesh Bank's uh, SRO, that we declared these 50 products <laughs> as a green product. And yeah. we said that we will reduce some, you know, tax, or, uh, tax reduction or VAT reduction or something else and so on. But there is much more to do. I mean, why, why not we are talking about this, um, you know, big, big investments, you know, financial investments. Uh, why not we talk about the, the bridges like on the breeze or you know the power plants and so on. So we have much more to do when we talk about the industry, banking industry as a whole. As we had the CPIR for the public investment, I think we should have a we have 60 odd banks you know in the country. Now we should have a you know um, a bank institutional performance review or something. I mean how far they're ready to contribute and what they can do given the policy architecture of the country and so on, you know, by both financing and fiscal. So that study should be in place. I mean, I, I don't want to make it even longer, but that is my response to your uh, things as far as I could listen to you. Sorry. 
Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mijan, may I step yeah, Thank you, Shuman. Because uh, what Shuman yeah. has mentioned. Sure. Okay, can you hear Please me? Please come in. Okay. Uh, he was talking about the yes, banking sure. sector. Uh, uh, in my career, I had the opportunity to work for two state-owned commercial bank as director. So okay. the, the fundamental point is, even if the you know, policy guidelines are there, but at the execution level, both at the bank management level and also at the board level. So we need to build the capacity. So how to channel you know, resources to, the, you know, uh, to improve the uh, you know, climate adaptation situation of the country, climate mitigation, all these things. So the board members need to be educated as well and also the bank management. So that is still missing. So we need to educate them in that fashion and then we can actually, you know, think of, you know, more, you know, kind of, you know, uh, challenging resources for green activities. Now I am I'm just looking at a question that is coming from Hasib, uh, CCD. Can I take that question yeah. or you'll be opening floor? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So sure. you can, you can say that. He, yes, please. He was, please he was talking about, uh, would you uh, mind to let as a bit clear about CCTF, you meant climate change trust fund. Right. I think yes. if it is a climate change trust fund, it is part of CCTF. Yeah. So uh, climate CFF, it is definitely part of climate fiscal framework. Now let me talk about CCTF. I I know you uh, 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 you know I understand you know about the background of the CCTF. It was created yeah. in the backdrop of inadequate international financing in Bangladesh. The government took this initiative and we channel resources every year uh, from 2010 budget. Uh, every year, initially uh, 700 crore. And as of now, the corpus is around 500 million. So this was a kind of demonstration on the part of the government to show the international partners that we can we can, we can just you know, tackle our own problems from our own resources. So that was the commitment of the government. And Bangladesh is perhaps you know, one of the few countries which could create this kind of fund in Bangladesh. Although the, the, the implementation part is a different story. So there are lots of irregularities and so, you know, instances of corruption are there, but it's a, it's a new one and uh, we should, Try to and uh, you know make it as you know effective as possible. And uh, in terms of selecting projects, we should be more careful. In terms of monitoring the project implementation, we should be more careful. There should be a very you know good framework for monitoring the activities of the operations of CCTF. So thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ranjit Babu. And now let me also invite the audience participants. Uh, some of the questions, uh, comments you have made about, I can see about uh, the role of private sector. So Shuman, can you elaborate a little on private sector, particularly in adaptation? How can we bring in private sector in adaptation, which is a very perennial problem globally, not just in Bangladesh? Thank you. Yes. Um, if I may, because I, I see one hand raising, but yes, if I may answer that first and then go to the yes, sure. participant very yes. shortly, um, is that um, go to Sylvie? Yeah, um, that is that is the bigger challenge I would say. You know, um, onboarding um, uh, private sector because private sector is all about you know end of the day balance sheet, right? You know yeah. how much money they invest and how much money they could recover or make benefit out of it, uh, how much money they can bring it to their shareholders. You know, end of the day, this is it. But, you know, um, how adaptation can be part of that, uh, that their journey. Problem is, adaptation is actually coming from the public good. And the government's ro main role is to create that public good. But here we are talking about the limited resources that the, the public sector has. And we need to invite the private sector to create the public goods. And is this a valid question that the public se uh, private sector would, would create public goods? For example, 
is it is it really valid that you know um, any company in the country will go to the coastal area and create a you know construct a polder around some you know um, intruded area by the saline water and so on is it at all you know um, profitable in short term in medium or long term even maybe not there the new ideas come that you know this blended financing and then all other financing models that government can make the initial investments so that it becomes a level playing field for the private sector to play around and make benefits out of it and make their own business case for example so there are ideas around and we need to choose which one better suits with our own system so that is in general my my response is that i don't have any any detailed study on that but that is what i think that um, although private sector is all about money but still they have social responsibilities and at the same time we need to create space for them not necessarily always we need to leave them to create their own space the public sector has that responsibility and should take that responsibility to get on board okay thank you uh, now silvi sirajam you have raised your hand be quick and thank you sir yeah. yeah, I'll try to be quick. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not being able to turn my video, but um, I'm very happy to see my former colleagues, uh, Shumun Bhai and also uh, respected Ranjit Sir, whom have worked very closely with uh, while I was working at UNDP. And uh, actually, my, I had two questions, but uh, because I was presenting um, on a paper yesterday to, uh, also to understand how the climate tagging can be done uh, in terms of you know having a separate portal uh, as you know that in the aid information management system, it's very difficult to track exactly how much money is being put together if you want to see just the climate projects. But I'm very happy to learn from um, Shumun Bhai that uh, there is the climate components are now being tracked and even being procurement is also coming into play. And I'd love to know a little more about that. So I'll go to my uh, first comment and then I'll ask a quick question. Um, first, I want to actually, um, you know, bring in the type, bring in the whole idea of insurance, which I think is really a double burden for Bangladesh not having climate-induced loss insured by uh, uh, insured, and their access to financial instruments is very minimal. So the risk to losing life and properties is also very high. So obviously, we have effective, you know, we should have effective risk tracking, security, coverage of the losses that are incurred by the people who are always hardest hit and they're hardest to reach. And um, secondly, uh, there are many challenges actually in the insurance um, you know, whole landscape because uh, the poor people are less accounted within the profiling of you know, potential customers as we see, making the risk coverage and advertisements only you know, fabricated on pen and paper and not in real terms. And I'm not going to go into details into you know, malpractices and everything else. So I think it's really time that we bring inclusiveness and you know, short support uh, the NMI communities where I feel that, uh, you know, the agent market development is very important uh, because, you know, obviously we're working, we're talking about the fiscal landscape, but there are some challenges of high risk premium, particularly, you know, when you're designing schemes for, you know, particularly called climate vulnerable locations, these people with uncertain, uncertainties of paying back. So if you know what I mean, like, you know, the agent management, agent market development is also a very embryonic stage in Bangladesh. So for instance, if you think about the certain banks or sanctioning loans, they're made to go for party preferred insurance companies due to lack of agents. So additionally, you know, there's capacity building problems and everything else. So I think these discussions are coming off in a very rightly time. Also uh, a little comment about, you know, how about going from weather-based insurance to climate adaptive insurance, where you cover the risk one fold. And when I was working at UNDP, I think there were some innovative ideas happening around that cent um, around that idea. So um, that could also be explored. This is not exactly directly related to the presentation, but now I'll just go quickly to um, you know asking a, my question, which is as you know, um, Shuman Bhai and Ranjit sir, obviously you gave uh, very constructive feedback on the Muji Climate Prosperity Plan, which was launched um, uh, during the first climate vulnerable summit in July. And also Mizan sir, you have given many feedback which we are trying to incorporate at this point. 
I'm very happy to also know from Shuman Bai that, uh, you know, the eight five year plan has taken into consideration of the climate fiscal framework and the environmental fiscal uh, reforms. So if we want to take some uh, uh, framing ideas from the CFF into the Moji Climate Prosperity Plan, then what would be your, um, you know, starting guidance into how we can map that into our uh, planning? I know it's a very broad question. You don't need to answer it immediately, but you can just drop me a line. This, that would be something very interesting for me to know that we are producing this big investment agenda plan. And uh, if uh, an excellent framework like the CFF needs to map into such an investment framework, then what would be your suggestions as experts that we could take into consideration? Thank you so much. Yeah, thank okay. you, Sylvie. I, I think, uh, yeah. you know, the last question yeah. that was raised by Sylvie should be taken by me because yeah. Shumon is the aware of Moji Climate Prosperity Plan. So uh, that's why I'm stepping in. I, I shouldn't have stepped in this way. So it, it doesn't oh, look good. Go ahead. But still, I thought that, you know, since Sylvie has mentioned this, the mapping, how we can map climate fiscal framework with uh, Mujib Climate Prosperity Plan. I think it should be, it, it cannot be discussed here in this you know, space because we have got very limited time. We have yes. to think about it, but this was perhaps raised by Mamun uh, in that day, uh, on that day, you know, during discussion. So uh, there is no mention about climate fiscal framework in the, Mujib, Mujib climate uh, prosperity plan. This should be included there, but it's a it's a very good question that we need to factor that in, you know, so that you know the 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 plan itself recognizes the existence of a climate fiscal framework that we are implementing in Bangladesh. That should, that recognition should be there. That was perhaps the main purpose of you know raising this issue in that meeting. So I will be discussing with you bilaterally, you know, and perhaps, you know, de definitely we can share it with other partners as well, but not today, because it would take a long time and how we can map it. So it's a very technical issue, but thank you very much for flagging this issue. Now over to Shuman to take other questions. Yeah, thank you. And, so before, um, before Shuman, before yeah. uh, answering uh, the question, if uh, let us collect a few more questions if uh, yeah, the sure. uh, participants have got, so that finally you can sum up. Uh, so, uh, dear participants, any question, comments, if you want to raise, very quick and short. If not, then Shuman, please respond to well, Sylvie's well, question um, and comments. Well, the other question uh, Sylvia has asked is, um, I'm also, you know, I have the same question, in fact, you know, um, regarding the, the, the insurance and its uh, mechanism, I mean, the delivery mechanism, it's, it's still pretty weak. And we have, we have seen cases that, you know, uh, given um, the smaller market, insurance market and limited confidence on the in insurance products that the uh, limited number of again i'm saying limited number of you know insurance provider uh, for the well-being i mean not necessarily providing you know car insurance and so on but providing insurance for the well-being um for crops for um you know houses for anything um so um i think um it's, it's a good idea to um looking into the climate based insurance um you know shifting a bit from the weather index space, but to my understanding, these two are not very uh, mutually exclusive. They are inclusive, obviously. It's all about, you know, finding the right indicator for a um, uh, mix of right indicators, you know, climate data and weather, whichever comes well, because one doesn't exist with the other. So that's that's the thing. I mean, and, and also I, I totally agree with you that uh, Agent-based model is is also very practical for um, insurance things, as the banks are also doing uh, the agent-based banking and so on. So uh, this is this is simply I can you know um, answer to you. I mean, there is I think there is another raised hand. Um, okay. It's asking from Codec. Yes. So Habib Hasib from Codec, Hasib. Unmute yourself. Is it there? Is it there? Unmute yourself. 
and no, not there. So any question, comments from audience? We are coming to the end of our scheduled time. So if not, then let me uh, sum up uh, in uh, a minute. Hello, hello. Hello, Hasib, are you hello. with us still? Sorry, sir. Uh, sorry, yeah. sir. I was uh, um, I, I could not unmute myself. Uh, okay. Extremely sorry. Uh, I have a question to uh, Shuman Bhai. Uh, uh, Shuman Bhai, uh, as uh, you said that the uh, procurement uh, and other issues you have mentioned in your uh, slides. So my question is, uh, it's actually not like direct question. I, I hope, uh, we hope that our procurement manual, uh, the government procurement manual, they must have uh, the uh, options of climate issues in that procurement manual. If not, then how could uh, the uh, climate uh, change, climate financing issues uh, be incorporated in the procurement manual, government procurement manual? And another issue is, is it rational or feasible to think of uh, introducing uh, result-based financing in the, uh, climate financing, financing sectors, uh, especially uh, I'm talking about the financial organizations like banks and other organizations. Is it uh, uh, okay or is it uh, rational to incorporate this thing in the uh, financial uh, um, financing practices, result based financing right. um, to address the climate change issues? Although, and, uh, although both of these questions, you know. Uh, I can partially answer, but it, it directly goes to um, uh, Ranjit sir. Uh, but before yeah, you, know, I... go, you know, going back to him, I I can just tell you that you know um, the procurement plan uh, when it was you know uh, the guideline uh, 2008, um, uh, it was developed in 2008, and when there was limited climate discussions around, I think that if there was the guideline was or the rules was developed right now. It, it would have you know included more of the climate change things because everyone is talking about it and this is the central core one of the national agendas um, to, to deal with so that is one thing and hope over time and the, there will be you know uh, new initiatives to include that climate change in the procurement rules and guidelines uh, that is one thing but the other thing the result based uh, financing i mean this is a whole question of, you know, the whole architecture of the uh, national financing and budgeting system. Um, we have the Budget um, Act 2009 or 10, I guess. I mean, that needs to be part of that. And it needs a lot of further reform, you know, uh, reforms in the um, uh, public finance management system. So um, uh, that is the thing. It is possible, very much possible, and it should be. That is ideal. But it, it would, it would cost, I mean, much of our resources and time. So let's live with what we have now and make it smart and then uh, take the uh, reforms, you know, uh, the next. So that is what I, what I understand. I mean, uh, let's not make people reform fatigue. I mean, too much reform altogether is not good. Uh, yeah. so, uh, you know, so why I, I am so asking this question side. because uh, you know, Ranjit sir, Ranjit sir uh, mentioned yes. uh, the challenges uh, uh, regarding the fiscal uh, system uh, implementation. So, uh, having known those challenges, I raise this question whether our procurement, uh, government procurement manual, manual or financial manual. Uh, are up to date, whether okay. these issues has already been incorporated in those uh, plans or not. Uh, Hasif, uh, yes. can, can I make a small correction? You are talking about procurement manual. Actually, these are not manual. Let us say yes. procurement legal framework. There are two sets of documents. One is or two sets of you know, regulation. One is Public Procurement Act, which was uh, the, this, this piece of legislation was enacted in 2006. And there is Public Procurement Rules 2008. As Shimon has mentioned, so when these two you know, important regulations were framed, the, the issue of climate change you know, was not very much in the discussion, you know, in the development discourse. So uh, that's why uh, this, this, this important aspect is missing. And definitely, you know, the rule laws is not something that, that cannot be changed. The rules can be changed anytime. 
So we'll have to pursue with the uh, relevant authority so that they incorporate this climate change. And that is in our agenda. That's why you mentioned, the, when you say green procurement, this will not be coming automatically, coming by automatically. We have to change those rules, act, or pieces of legislation you know, in due course. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Ranjit Babu. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, let us now just uh, let me spend one minute to sum up. We had a very, very discussion, uh, excellent discussion today. In fact, CFF 2020 is a much, much better improvement of 2014. For here, the new areas, Simon, you have rightly mentioned about the role of, particularly the role of private sector and CSOs, NGOs, and also kind of exploration of the new instruments for uh, addressing climate change, particularly for adaptation, uh, which uh, have not been detailed out there in the framework, but I, I hope, we hope that in future further studies will be done uh, in earnest and what we need very much. And we expect that uh, experts like Shimon, if you don't leave Bangladesh, that would be better because we don't need to uh, invite uh, foreign experts, consultants and all. Like uh, Bangladesh needs experts like you. Uh, and we also need to build capacity. Hope you will lead uh, in capacity building of young financial managers, both from the public and private sector. And I can, we can provide you a forum for doing that. You can lead uh, in that process. So, uh, dear colleagues, participants, thank you very much for your kind attention and raising interesting questions, comments. Thank you, Fahad, a colleague who coordinated this event and all others. And uh, we look forward further, uh, Mr. Schumann, for interacting with you. Hope you will always be with us and we will work together. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Ranjit Kumar Chakraborty. You had been a great uh, kind of source of knowledge for us and I can colleagues and the students uh, of our master's program. So I hope you will also continue to uh, be a partner with us in future too. So thank you all again, and see you all in, at some next future events. Thank you. Goodbye for the day. Yes, sir. Okay.